Hi guys, so for the last week I've been testing this. This is the BMAX X14. So it's really like the Jumper EasyBook X3 Pro that I reviewed. That was the last Gemini Lake laptop. So this one has dual channel, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage. It's got wireless AC from Intel, but it's a slightly different chip. It's the 9461, but it performs just like the 3165. 38 watt hour battery, which is good for seven to eight hours. But the screen here, as you can see, is quite reflective and that's because it's not fully laminated and unlike what some people were thinking it doesn't support touch either which is a shame because why put a glass screen in front of an IPS panel especially non laminated or even laminated if it was without touch support so in this review I'll go over this laptop we'll take a detailed look at it and we'll see if it's any good and if it is going to be better than the BMAX Y13 which is my current favorite Gemini Lake laptop so just like the other BMAX laptops I have reviewed, it comes double boxed and it is well packaged. We have a power adapter here which is 12 volts, 2 amps. You've got a UK plug adapter, US and European plug adapter. The laptop weighs 1.28 kilos and is 14.8 millimeters thick. So the weight is decent. A lot of them are 1.4 kilos. This one's slightly lighter, but it does have an all metal build. Now the lid's made out of an alloy, the hinge does feel quite stiff there, it doesn't feel to me that it's going to loosen up anytime soon. And we've got this Decepticons looking Transformers logo on the back, and you can see there are two cutouts there, so the backlight from the IPS panel shines through as its eyes. Now the screen, it reclines back the typical kind of maximum angle here, which is not a lot. It's not one of those laptops that you can lie the screen completely flat, unfortunately. So we have glass that covers the screen on here, but it's not fully laminated. The gap is minimal. It's only about one millimeter, so it doesn't really bother me too much. And here you can see the pre-applied screen protector, the first layer that we have to pull off here, does outline our key specs. And note the camera location. It's terrible. I don't like the fact that they've put it down here in the bottom chin. It could have gone in the top bezel, I feel. They do have, to me, enough room to put it there. This camera is flanked by dual array microphones too, and they are quite close to the keyboard, so you do get a bit of feedback when typing. The camera quality itself, well, it's just HD, and I've already tested it out. It looks like the others. It's a little bit choppy, about 20 frames per second, not particularly good quality. So the X14's keyboard is very similar to the Jumper X3 Pro's keyboard, and this is a great keyboard. Very good to type on, I do like it. However, it is missing the print screen button for me. Now you can see the keycaps, the letters on here, they are much more visible. Right now I've got the backlight on. It's not automatic. You have to press F9 here to turn it on and you'll see that that's off. That's the first level quite low and that's the brightest I've got it on currently. Now really good feedback from this keyboard. I do like typing on it. I think it's a slightly better keyboard than the one you'll find in the Y13. This is another BMAX laptop and you'll see the problem here we have with the Y13 that it's quite hard to actually see the individual letters on those keycaps because the way their keyboard is. I just find it's a little bit better and much more visible on the X14 overall. And a very good touch pad and the palm rest, this is made out of metal as well. And one of the reasons you would get this Gemini Lake laptop is it's one of the more modern ones that are finally coming with this right here, which is a full spec Type-C port. So it supports data, display out, 4K 60 hertz tested, and it does work just fine. And also power delivery support is working. But the charge we have, of course, is DC charging. That plug is right here. And then just like the Jumper X3 Pro here, we've got a micro SD card reader. Now this is only wired up via USB 2 hub, like all of them. We've got a 3.5mm headphone jack with mic support and the quality out of it does sound good to me. There's no static or interference. And we've got a full-size Type-A USB 3 port here, something the Y13 is lacking. That's only got Type-C ports on that one, so very handy to have the full-size port. And just like the Jumper EasyBook X3 Pro, again, the power button is separated away from the keyboard. I like this. I don't like it when manufacturers put the power button where the delete key is. And like the other Gemini Lake laptops I have been reviewing, we do have a fully unlocked BIOS with this one, which is great. That means we can go in here and increase the power limits. So by default, the manufacturer has gone with Intel's default, which is the 6 watt TDP, which is our 6 watt power limit. But you can set something like 10 or 11 watts because the thermals are actually very good on this particular laptop. And why are those thermals so good? Well, we do have quite a large copper heat sink in here, and that's typical now. Manufacturers have been doing this for a while, which is great because early on, they didn't actually do this. They just put some heat shielding over the Atoms back then, or the Apollo Lakes, or the Gemini Lake chips, 
but now they're using a decent bit of copper there. So our battery, this is 38 watt hours. This is very typical. We see this in pretty much all of the Gemini Lake laptops that I have been reviewing. And that will give us about around seven to eight hours of battery runtime. Now you notice with the wireless card here, that it's the 9461. We typically see Intel's 3165, but here they've used a different chip and it is just a single antenna that's in here. So it's just a one by one antenna setup. Uh, so you're not gonna expect or get a very good performance. Maximum speeds are topping out around 350 megabits per second from this wireless AC and Bluetooth 5 combo card. Now they have routed the antenna for that wireless chip right up into the lid of the laptop, which is great because a lot of manufacturers will actually just put it in the palm rest. But since the palm rest here is metal, that probably wouldn't work too well. And that is why they have done that. I believe it is somewhere around the top of the screen, the front of it. Like all of the other models, this laptop does have an easy access hatch here to replace or upgrade the SSD if you wanted to do so. So it's just two screws and make sure you replace it with a SATA 3 2280 SSD. All right, so let's move on to the display. So it's a little disappointing, this IPS panel. So it's 14.1 inches and it's the resolution 1920 by 1080p, so 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So why is it disappointing? Well, the maximum brightness tops out at only 180 approximate nits there. It should be high. It should be 200, well over 200. In fact, 250 would be ideal or even more. So this is where it's a bit of a letdown here. Now, the calibration out of the box here isn't bad. You can see this is now calibrated. So uncalibrated, it's got a bit of a bluish tint to it, which is typical trait of an IPS panel there. And we'll take a look at the color coverage now, the gamut we've got. So sRGB of 95%, that is not bad at all. 68% NTSC, and the most important one here, well, at least for myself, uh, Adobe RGB, 73%. So this is okay for the type of laptop it is. It's just ideally, I would like to see more brightness and because the panel itself is not fully laminated, you can see it's reflecting and see my camera and my hand right here. Uh, yeah, there's just way too many reflections. So it really does need to be brighter. It's a far superior screen in the BMAX Y13, I feel. So I found general performance of this laptop seems to be one of the better Gemini Lake ones that I have looked at. It's probably because the RAMs and dual channel configuration. Remember, it's just running at the moment, the default six watt TDP. And this is limiting the performance a little bit. If we increase that to nine or 10, it would be even faster. But going to the Windows 10 menu here, sometimes with the Gemini Lakes, this can really lag, but you see that comes in quite nicely. I'm not seeing too much of a transitional lag too that you sometimes often see. So even bringing up Chrome here, that is quite quick and smooth. So the single core score here, not bad for the Gemini Lake. This is a Geekbench 4. Multi-core score, I have seen higher here I'm not too sure why that was a little bit lower. So it will open just up in Google right here. Just gonna open up some tabs, do a bit of a tab test here and see how many we can run and how fast things load in. I've noticed the wireless performance does seem to be a very good here as well. So I'm just gonna sure search here for cats like I always do. Haven't looked at this before, by the way. Uh, a lot of you will probably say that's hard to believe. So hold down control, just gonna open up a few of these pages here. Now I'll zoom right out by accident. Okay, so let's just open up about 10 different tabs and zoom in again. And those are loading there in the background should be coming in pretty quick. Check the scrolling performance, a little bit of noticeable lag here, especially this one, this page here, Universal Pictures, that's very image heavy. Um, Wikipedia that loads in quick. So still loading in and can swapping between those tabs, that performance is, um, it's not bad, but but definitely I've seen faster with say a Core M3. The recent Chewy mini book I looked at was definitely a lot faster than this at that. So I'll just minimize that. And I do have in the background here, just a spreadsheet here with LibreOffice. And you can see scrolling performance with this, you'll be able to edit and this shouldn't be lagging out. No, this isn't okay. So that's running fine. So you can do lightweight work like this, but nothing too demanding, like 4K video editing, even 1080p video editing, I would not do on this particular system. And just to stress it out even more, this is a 60 frames per second 4K file. Uh, okay, of course that's going to happen. I don't have the extension for that one, so I just open that up with Media Player Classic. And not gonna edit or cut this, so you can see the performance you can expect from this 
In fact, that one's still playing in the background. Okay, so that is loading in pretty quick. A little bit of lag, as you can see, that video. And that is probably because I got all those Chrome tabs open there. So it's just this chipset for light work here. Website browsing and battery life, what you can expect is seven to eight hours. This is pretty much like all the other 38 watt hour laptops I am checking out and reviewing on the channel with the Gemini Lake here. You can see I had run it for two hours and 25 minutes and was down to 68% and it was giving me an estimate there of seven hours and 20 minutes. And as I said, seven to eight hours is what you'd be able to get out of this on a lower brightness. So we've got those four top firing speakers and they're not really that loud at all and they do lack bass. They're not great, these speakers. Now you can boost the volume via software. There's a few applications out there like uh, DFX Audio Booster, but I'm gonna just play it back here without any software boost. This is just out of the box, maximum loudness here and you'll see that it's really not that good. So here's Counter-Strike and you can see it's scraping 18 frames per second. It's a little slow here. This is 720p on the lowest settings. So not amazing performance, but it's getting a little bit higher there. You can see the frame rate. So just don't expect it to be, you know, super quick at gaming here. I'm probably gonna die straight away. Oh, I didn't even manage to kill that guy. So even down to eight frames per second there. So yeah, not really for gaming, just these light titles. And you probably wanna lower the resolution down to something like 800 times 600. And then a quick look here in Linux that everything is working okay. So we've got control for our screen brightness, the volume that is working as you can see. And we also have the wireless working, Bluetooth, everything. So that is good. This is Linux Mint by the way. So recapping here, this is an okay laptop. I feel I really like the keyboard, it's backlit, it's great to type on, the touchpad is also good, full spec type C port with power delivery, 4K 60 hertz, full size type A USB 3 port, powering external hard drives, very good thermals, battery life is about seven to eight hours. The build is all metal, it's thin, it's under 1.3 kilos, that is also great. Good audio out from the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, Poor speakers, they're really not as loud as they should be. The webcam quality is poor as well. I don't like it, I don't like the position of the webcam. And the other thing too to note is the screen is the biggest disappointment here for me because it should be brighter than the 180 to 190 nits that I'm measuring. And really, okay, it's got a good color coverage for what it is, the panel it is, the IPS panel. I'm not seeing a lot of light leakage around the end, the edges, sorry, around here but it's just that brightness, it needs to be brighter and it's not fully laminated, doesn't support touch. So my favorite and what I think is the best Gemini Lake dual channel eight gigabyte laptop out there that I've reviewed, all of them I've been reviewing, this one will probably be the last before I go mad, is the BMAX Y13 because this one has a backlit keyboard, it's a little harder to see the keycaps, the letters on them, but I like the fact that the screen's fully laminated, it's a much brighter screen and it converts into a rather large 13.3 inch bulky heavy Windows 10 tablet, but you've got that option and I often use it just in presentation mode here as well and that is good. So that is the X14. Sadly for me, I was hoping it was gonna be one of the better laptops. It's just the screen has really let it down. Thank you so much for watching this review. Do check out the review of this one here. That is the BMAX Y13, my favorite. And the Jumper Easy Book X3 Pro is also very similar to this laptop, but it has a brighter screen and a better price tag, so I would say go for it over the X14 here. See you in the next video.